Martin Luther King said, it's not the bad people who do bad things that is the most painful. It's when good people watch the bad being done and say nothing. And and flying monkeys, that's the most painful. They are the good people who are not stepping in to protect the victim because they think the predator is the prey and they think the prey is the predator. So no, they're not bad. They're, they're probably wonderful, kind, loving, but it makes it more painful because A, you didn't expect it from them and B, you know they're innocent and then C, it's not like you can then go and tell them that you are innocent because they will not believe you because the predator has set them up to think you're a horrible, terrible, awful person. You are listening to Prey vs. Predator, the podcast. We are thrilled to come and meet you wherever you're at. We are a coercive control recovery and education podcast. We want to teach the prey of the world. We want to empower them to look out for the predators and have an understanding of what they're dealing with. My name is Amber, and I am super thrilled to be here with you today. Next, we have... PJ, how about you go next? I'm PJ, and I am also... (laughs) Uh, so super thrilled. Uh, super thrilled. <laughs> I'm so happy to have people listening and to share our experiences and let people know you're not alone. Yeah. Today we're talking about flying monkeys. Um, Jill, introduce oh, yourself. Oh, sorry. My name is this Jill. This is Jill. The Hi, amazing everybody. Jill. Hi, everybody. My name is Jill. We are talking about flying monkeys. What is a flying monkey? You might ask. Well, keep listening. In the world of predators, flying monkeys are individuals that a predator will recruit and then use to do their bidding, typically to isolate, alienate, and harass another person. A classic example of this is observed when a relationship with a narcissist comes to an end. I have a story about this. The predatory individual will tell anyone close to the couple, friends, family members, sometimes even the family members of the ex, typically false information that will make them think poorly of the other person or even result in the flying monkeys harassing the ex-partner alienating or isolating the ex-partner and leaving the ex-partner feeling lost, hurt, and in some cases, traumatized. Do you talk about the image of a flying monkey at all in like, can we talk about that, where it comes from? Yeah, t- t- tell us, Amber. From what I know, and I don't know if I'm correct, but I have an image of the flying monkeys from Wizard of Oz. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That That's it. used to fly as the minions of the green The Wicked queen, Witch. The Wicked Witch. That's right. And I remember they were pretty terrifying as yeah. a child. I remember them specifically. Um, and then they were... Yeah, just monkeys with wings on that would chase Dorothy and all the other and terrorize them. Well, and and that's exactly what where they got their name from because the flying monkeys did the bidding of the Wicked Witch. Um, In that case, I feel like the monkeys knew they were doing the bidding of the Wicked Witch, um, and so they were bad. (laughs) And (laughs) I would really like to put all flying monkeys in the category of. Uh, bad, evil, wrong, uh, because they do so much damage. I feel like flying monkeys probably do as much damage or more. Um, Speaking personally, I had a number of flying monkeys that I had to interact with, and I felt probably more pain from the loss, uh, the treatment that I had from the flying monkeys than the predator. Mm. Uh, because the flying monkeys turned out to be former people that I love and loved and felt connected to and close to. And I didn't know that there, that the predator had gotten into their ear and it started to tell these really profound, sick lies. Mm. Um, in fact, what we call PVR, a predator victim, victim reversal, the predator had told them that I was doing to the predator what the predator was actually doing to me. That's what they do. Right? So so this predator victim reversal, so they sell it, and it sounds so powerful because predators really live in this world of fantasy. So the fantasy becomes a reality. So they are really powerful um, liars, and they can get in front of a story, they can get in front of you, and they can... um, 
tell the people that that they love, uh, that you love, these stories about you, most people aren't going to come to you and say, hey, I just want to check this out. I heard this from, you know, Billy Bob, and it doesn't sound like you. So I'm curious, like, most people will just trust Billy Bob. They'll just like, well, Billy Bob, because most flying monkeys are prey. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, and trusting, kind, mm-hmm. nice. Just want to help. I believe that and and because the the predators can be so convincing mm-hmm. and they does it never occurs to the flying monkey that they are being used to crush another human being that's why when you said flying monkeys are bad i have a reaction of they may not know they're bad oh, oh the, no, no no and that's no. what i that's what i helping. like even even in the wizard of oz mythology these little flying monkeys were just doing the bidding of the person that maybe created them right so but the in human terms if you are being uh, used by somebody to hurt somebody else you need to take responsibility for yourself to be you know what i mean like you have to take responsibility to as that you are being a flying monkey to somebody. So maybe you are innately bad. I don't know. Like, this is something to discuss because you are doing something evil. It's horrific. It's like, it's like um, Martin Luther King said, it's not the people, it's not the bad people who do bad things that is the most painful. It's when good people watch the bad being done and say nothing. That's right. And, and flying monkeys, that's the most painful. They are the good people who are not stepping in to protect the victim because they think the predator is the prey and they mm-hmm. think the prey is the predator. So no, they're not bad. They're they're probably wonderful, kind, loving, but it makes it more painful because yes. A, you didn't expect it from them and B, you know they're innocent and then C, it's not like you can then go and tell them that you are innocent because they will not believe you because the predator has set them up to think you're a horrible, terrible, awful person. Or they think it's a dance, like we've talked about before, all those books about it takes two. Yeah. One person, you know, you're equally to blame. So somebody is a flying monkey who comes to you, you go, we all get mad in relationships. Yeah. We all do things we're embarrassed by. We all, but it's like, no, you're not understanding. This person is coercive and controlling me. This person is abusing me, emotionally abusing me. Um, so it can be more painful, like you said. Well, and because I think predators often present themselves as victims. And so you take this kind, nice, sweet person right. and you present yourself as the victim of somebody else's abuse. It is it it puts that kind of it hooks these innocent people into wanting to protect the what they see as the victim. Mm-hmm. So in essence, what they're doing is they are protecting the wolf, so, so to speak. And like the wolf, you know, like the wolf is led into the pen. It destroys and rips a sheep to shreds and the flying monkeys come in. And they wrap the wolf up to because the wolf has said that the sheep has hurt it. Mm -hmm. And they leave this little sheep that has been torn apart bleeding. Mm -hmm. They sort of step over that sheep and, in fact, like throw some salt into the wounds because they deserve it. Um, So they see this, you know, this poor wolf as as being victimized and they see this bleeding sheep and they don't know the sheep is bleeding. They think the sheep is the wolf and they confuse the two. But in the meantime, the damage is done and the lack of support. And then and then the the predator gets the support That's that right. the prey so desperately needs. That's right. And the nature, of course, of control is so difficult to explain to people that it's even more difficult because what when the prey does try to speak if the prey ever tries to say convince the flying monkey of their innocence it doesn't sound that bad it's true i remember so my my predator did something to me and after that happened uh they told our whole community that i had done yeah that thing yes Mm, to to them yeah and i'm like what like what? What planet are you from? And and I think once PJ Did they believe it, I don't. I don't know. Like once PJ, my predator came to your house, yes, and was talking to you about me, and yep. and, and saying things 
that I had done to him that yeah. he had done to me. Yeah. And and so he was trying to make you into a flying monkey. Oh, absolutely. And, like, and what was that like for you? You know, he because what I remember is when he came, he was acting as an innocent victim who just wanted to protect his his family <laughs> yeah. and from 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 your foolish mistakes mm-hmm. from your you know kind of crazy um irresponsible behavior i i think i listened very politely the difference was and this is i think where flying monkeys i feel really devastated by flying monkeys because in that case i bumped up what i knew about you and your character mm. against what this person was saying. Mm. And no matter what this person said, that was not how I understood you. So I smiled and said, yeah, okay, thank you for the information. And then I think I brought it to you mm-hmm. and <laughs> said, FYI, this is what is being yeah. promoted. Yeah. Um, and 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 probably looking for some reassurance that I was accurate in my judgment of you, which was really clear to me so quickly mm-hmm. that yes, it was. But I I actually found in my like I, I want to hear from you too, like because because you had a bit a bit of a similar experience where this person had tried to hurt you at multiple levels. Mm-hmm. What did you find? Was did most people believe the predator? And, oh, and, that's such. Or did most people believe you? I think um, most people believed me, but my kids believed my predator. Really? Mm. Yep. Because my predator, um, they love the predator. Mm-hmm. They love my predator. It was too expensive to. Yeah. And, and for them, they knew that they weren't going to lose relationship with me. Mm-hmm. Was and they, this post separation? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. And and, and uh, still to this day, if push came to shove, they they would be extremely torn not to side with my predator because mm. that would mean losing that relationship. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and I think for me, I felt like almost like it was the opposite, which is anybody that got anybody that heard the predator's side, some people just immediately cut off connection with me. Mm. Mm-hmm. They just. That, what, because what was being said was so profoundly violating of their own value system mm-hmm. that they wanted nothing to do with somebody who could do that to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so these people that I loved and was connected to and found such um, connection with, for them to shut me out and mm-hmm. then think so badly of me when I had not only not done something wrong, but actually been the one harmed and hurt and they were hurting me because somebody else, you know, like the person hurting me had hurt me more by making them yep. think badly of me. Yep. But it, there was a different level of hurt in that, you know, you didn't come to me. Yeah. You didn't talk to me. You didn't let me have a chance. I remember one person came to me and said, um, you know, I understand that. I just want you to know that I understand that there are two sides to every story. But they said it in a way that was it felt really cold and condescending like like they were morally superior to me like i know these things that you did like it felt like if i had to say what i thought they were saying was i know these things that you did and i know that they are terrible but i know probably some things were done to you too that i'm not aware of and they never followed through hmm. they never asked what those things might be they just made their choice made their decision cut me out, but wanted me sort of to know that maybe they understood that maybe I wasn't as evil as like, you know, maybe there was yeah. some other things they didn't know. Mm, and, yeah. and that again, felt so horrific, like so disgusting. Like I wanted to have a shower afterwards because I thought, wow, so I am broken, bleeding on the floor and you're stepping over me going like, you know, theoretically, I know maybe you were hurt too, but I'm just going to go help the person who did this to you mm-hmm. and make sure they're okay. And I don't know that words can do justice to that experience. Um, so how do you know, like, if it's so crushing and if the flying monkeys are, we're saying at some one level innocent, what do we do with flying monkeys? As prey. As prey. Yeah. Do, do we challenge them? Sometimes I do think when you're in a, 
a separation situation, say it's partner separating, you do have to pick a side. You know, people are like, well, I'll be both, you know, and you do. So maybe they think that they're picking a side, but they're picking the wrong side, obviously. They're picking the witch's side. Um, So how do you know which that you are being a flying monkey or being used as a flying monkey? Right. First of all, or... Or what do you do with the flying monkey? Like, which question do we want to answer here? Well, I mean, I'll answer the first one. What do you do with flying monkey? And in, in terms yeah. of my own experiences, let them go. Mm. They they need to be out of your life, and they need to stay out of your life, and you need to not allow them into your life at all. And and you need to grieve the loss of the people that you love, and you need to understand that they are innocent, totally innocent victims, just like you were. They are totally innocent victims of the predator. That doesn't mean that what they did was right. It doesn't mean that what they did was acceptable. It's it's hurtful and painful and not okay. But they are also innocent victims. They are people who are trying to do the right thing. But they need to be out of your life, full stop. And I would say that they're not being good friends. Like, if you're just going to be simplistic about it. Yeah. Right? If you're If you're coming at me with evil intentions sent to do th- do harm to me then i don't want you in my life either yeah. yeah so it's having strong or good enough boundaries to understand i don't deserve to be treated that way yeah and it those are hard 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 decisions to make especially if you love them mm-hmm. or you feel lo- alone or isolated or maybe you're away from your own family and friends and you're surrounded by flying monkeys. I think those are really hard decisions. But you almost have to be your best friend mm-hmm. and really gird up your boundaries or even your walls. Like I would think of even if you were doing the image of a flying monkey from Wizard of Oz, they're going to assail you. So you need to put up your boundaries so they can't get in. Absolutely. And, and, and I just want to say... Like, PJ, what you did for me in that situation was you said, hmm, that doesn't sound like my friend. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's such a simple phrase that we can all learn to say when, you know, when someone comes to us and, and, and they're dissing someone else. If it doesn't sound like them, say, that doesn't sound like them. Yeah, I found I found it shocking and I've I've worked with so many people since then who have had the same experience of devastation in that these are people you think would know you. Right. And you're like you've known me sometimes for 10, 20, 30 years, family members sometimes mm. that you have spent your lifetime having an impeccable reputation of kindness, goodness, pray behavior. Right? Just giving and self-sacrificing. And then somebody comes along and goes, oh, no, behind the scenes, this person is abusive and nasty and cold and cruel. Now, and sometimes it's hard with predators because people will see, like, you know, person A and person B, they might not know that the predator behind the scenes is predatory either. But I do think that when you have two really, let's say you have two people and you really One is saying this person is terrible, awful, because I did have other people like, what do you do if you think you might be a flying monkey? Mm -hmm. I think one thing is if you look at the history of somebody who um, is saying bad things about somebody, especially if they're your partner or a parent or something like that, like, oh, my my kids are terrible and awful or my my ex-partner is terrible and awful or my current partner is terrible and awful. If that makes sense in terms of like, yes, I have witnessed the person that they're talking about being mean, cold, cruel, nasty, you know, um, hateful. These things all make sense because their partner has a history of broken relationships. Their, Their partner has a history of being cruel. Then that makes more sense to listen to one side if that makes sense. But when you have two people, even let's say you have two people and you believe that one person is like, okay, you both have good reputations of being good people, but one is saying that one is a terrible person. Because what I had other people do is listen to the predator and listen to me and then 
do this almost like back and forth crazy making. And and it was crazy making. Like I think probably cost a few gray hairs on on people in our lives and a few, you know, um, sleepless nights. But following up and following through and continuously oh. doing the hard work of friendship and relationship of saying, okay, he said, she said, or she said, she said, um, you know, yeah. or he said, he said, but they followed up and followed through and they asked the hard questions and they would hear the story from the predator and they would hear the story from the prey and they wouldn't know which one was which, but they stuck it out for long enough hmm. to start beginning to see a real a pattern. pattern. Yeah, And I think that pattern sometimes can take years to become really clear because when you step into this situation, you often step in as prey. You don't have a lexicon for this. You don't have words. You don't have a language. You don't have, you don't know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't start to become apparent sometimes for many years, two, three years. And it sounds like you're, you're saying that it takes effort. So much work. It's so much work on the part of a person who can go, hey, let me get into relationship with those both of these people and figure out. Now, in your situation, the two of you, you had enough, PJ, you had enough relationship with Jill to assess that didn't sound like them. Whereas well, but I think I think there's a lot of people in my life and probably Jill's life that knew us equally as well, if mm -hmm. not more mm -hmm. than we knew each other. But they never asked that question. They never yeah. they never did. They just went, oh, you must be telling the truth. The, mm -hmm. um, the this person in front of me is telling me that you know Jill's a bad person, and huh, I thought she was pretty wonderful, but I guess I, I was guess wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. So not trusting whoever talks louder wins. Is right. that what it is? Is just somebody who ever talks so. loudest, or or gets to you first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, and I, and I think that you really, I think the only thing that stopped me was just, I have this belief that character is, character is character. So you don't spend five or six years or 10 years, at, uh, you know, knowing somebody, and then all of a sudden that character flips and there's somebody totally different. Like, as far as when you see character, right? So if something bumps up against something that you've known this person for a long time and it sounds like a completely different person, like, wow, I must have not ever known this person. It is possible, but it's also possible that you do know that person mm -hmm. and at least let it allow you to investigate, mm -hmm. right? So had I gone to Jill and said, hey, this is what I heard. This is what was said. I don't believe it for a hot minute. But Jill had been sketchy or vague, vague or, yeah. or said this, like, you know, like, you know, said started to be really cruel or said things that don't make sense. Then I might have put maybe more weight on what the other person said. Yeah. Right. But instead, Jill explained and it made total sense and it was really clear. And there was no vagueness. No. And it was like, yep, you are who I thought you were. Mm -hmm. And that makes really a lot of sense to me how to. How to frame this now. Okay, so for our listeners, if they are wondering if they have been made into flying monkeys by someone, some advice that I can share is, does this person exhaust you? Does this person consistently portray themselves as a victim? Mm, brilliant. Does this... Are, are, do you automatically go into caregiver mode when this person is around? Oh, if like those three so things, good, yeah. if those three things are apparent, guess what? You're a flying monkey. Can you re can you recap those? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, number one, uh, does this person constantly exhaust you? Do they leave you exhausted? Are they an um, energy vampire? Yep. Or do they consistently portray themselves as a victim? And do they thrust you right away into caregiver mode? Yes. Those are so important. Those are wow. so good. Yep. Um, I want to redo... I want to redo this episode and put those at the beginning. <laughs> but the, no, like you just absolutely nailed it because I think that the predator, the predator hooks the prey through their desire to caretake. Yep. Oh, and, absolutely. And and I think that that if you are with somebody who is 
telling you all these negative things about their child, about their about their um, their ex spouse or their spouse or their best friend or something along those lines, where it is this kind of like victim narrative of like you know poor me, I have to suffer this. And they do it in a way, recap them again. Okay. <laughs> do, do they exhaust you emotionally? Oh, yeah. So then you're exhausted yeah, emotionally. Yeah. yeah. Um, do they consistently portray themselves as a victim? Right. And um, do they catapult you into caregiver mode? So if they, if they are triggering your caretaking mm-hmm. behavior mm-hmm. and you kind of get to the point where you get exhausted yeah. and... They are always the victim. Yeah. Always the victim. Yeah, always the victim. And, and don't take responsibility. That's right. Or You're a flying monkey. I do think there's people out there, though, that take on caretaking at the expense of themselves, and they don't get exhausted, and they don't get... Ever? Uh, yeah, I do think there's people out there. Maybe they have somewhat of a... Ba- or they have to go home to their own homes or whatever, that maybe they'll have a hard time seeing beyond the caretaking role. Uh, but maybe there's something in them that needs to be sorted out then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but even a- so, I think you probably like, um, I can't remember, um, I can't remember the author, but the, the name of the book is When to Walk Away. Mm. Um, and in there, he talks about toxic people. He doesn't use course of control or any sort of therapeutic psychological language. He just says toxic people, his definition is something along the lines of uh, toxic people are people that you, you know, you can identify them when, you give them a lot of your energy, and they're no better for it. But you're, but you're exhausted. <laughs> yes, yes, right. And and so yeah. I think that is a really clear indication of you maybe haven't fully been exhausted. You might get energy from helping and being a caregiver, but at the same time, you probably get to a point with these individuals where you give a lot and you can feel it. It starts to become unbalanced, yeah. maybe. Uh, even you though you resent, can, you can feel resentful. Yeah, like yeah. so, you may not be mm. exhausted, exhausted, but you may feel like you start to realize that you're giving a lot more than you're getting. Mm-hmm. And so, I think that Jill is nail on the head, yeah. brilliant. I'm gonna copyright that. You copyright I think you that should, because predators <laughs> do exhaust. They do yeah. feed off of people. That's the thing, especially that caregiver. Yeah, yeah, especially the caregiver. That is what makes them prey. That they are caretaking. Yeah, and then Absolutely. so I think that's amazing way for us to kind of sum up this episode. Yeah. It was yeah. a good episode. It was you a guys. really good episode, and we really appreciate you listening with us today. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us on our social medias. Our on YouTube. Uh, We have an email account. We would love to hear from you. Just check us out on our profiles. And please give us a like, a thumbs up. Uh, If you want to be a Patreon donor, we'd accept it because this takes a lot of energy and resources Mm -hmm. to get this done. And we just really want to thank you for listening. Yeah. And send it to anybody that you know who could use it. We, We want to expand our community. Don't be a flying monkey. Don't be a flying monkey. Do your research. Do your homework. Don't hurt Mm -hmm. more prey. Do no harm. Thank you, guys.